Have you ever dreamed of unreasonably upgrading your tractor mower? Well, I certainly have. And if that's the case for you too, we've got you covered in this episode. Oh, and we'll have a little fun along the way as well. Hmm, no. Certainly not. Hmm, that's more like it. Dibs. We have many exciting upgrades today. But first, let's perform some springtime maintenance. to chew stock blades and mow grass with the first item we have in store. And check these dudes out. These are the Oregon G5 Gator Blades. Notice these aggressive looking fins on the trailing edge of the blades. This is part of the high lift design to increase airflow, but this and the overall curvature also helps with the mulching action of the blade. And I must say, these feel like some heavy duty chunks of metal. For my application, I bought a set of these 598 629s. And note that these are actually made in the US of A. There's a waxy protective coating on these and they claim to be pre-sharpened out of the box. Organsight says that tungsten carbide is fused onto the blade to help extend life and sharpening frequency. This is a blade balancer. I picked it up at my friendly hardware store just down the street for a few bucks. You can see that all it really is is just a couple of pieces of plastic. The star design for the center hole makes it a bit tough to use this particular balancer, ensuring you have to balance the blades on the blade balancer and make sure they're balanced. <clears throat> but you know, with a little finesse, it does work. If these were out of balance, we'd simply take a little material off the heavier end of the blade until it teeters perfectly in the middle. But for what we're seeing here, eh, it looks close enough. We'll check out the other one as well. Yep, I think this is just about right. But before we install these dudes, let's pull the deck off and see what lies beneath. It's recommended to remove the plug wire, or wires if you're working with a twin cylinder model. And because I'm changing this out of my rough driveway, I'll put a piece of cardboard underneath the deck to help slide the deck out easier. Let's lower the deck level all the way down so we can have clearance to unclip the fasteners. I'll remove this engine pulley keeper rod out of the way. Get them bolts from the right side, or if you don't feel like walking back to the garage to get the ratchet set, you, you can just unlatch it from the other side with a bit of persuasion to free it from the frame hole. To remove this pin off the front deck, lift arm, pull up, and then outwards, and hold on tight, or it could come shooting off. Remove the bow tie pins on each side of the rear deck lift arm, and then you can pull this bracket straight off. Now we'll simply raise the deck lift lever up to move the lift gear out of the way. The deck is almost free, but we'll move it out a bit so we can better access the PTO cable. Remove the bow tie pin and pull back slightly to remove the cable. Now I can access the spring that leads to the idler bracket. Now that the deck is fully detached, we can slide this dude straight out. So first thing we'll do is a quick cleaning on the top of the deck to remove all this dead grass and mulched up grasshoppers. And we'll flip the deck over to see what secrets it holds. Oh man, well, well, it looks like we have our work cut out for ourselves. Not only is there excessive buildup on the deck, but there is also some buildup on these blades. But before we can safely scrub the deck clean, let's take off the blades. They need to come off anyways for our upgrade. We'll put on a thick set of gloves. These blades are still sharp and they also have the added bonus of jagged edges from the various debris from our venturesome yard. So use caution when removing these or your project could be a lot more expensive than you originally thought it would be. Let's grab a small 2x4 and wedge that in here somewhere. We'll also grab a 24mm socket and a half inch ratchet. This nut is on here quite tight. You may have to use a breaker bar if this doesn't come off with the ratchet. And we'll do the same for the other side as well. Okay, now for the tedious task. I'll try to be kind to the finish on the underside of this deck. We don't want to gouge it and cause it to rust out faster than it should. 
Here is um, some random plastic tool I found in the garage that might work. Let's crank up the music and get to work. And wait, what is this? It seems we've made it down to the Eocene layer. Quite fascinating. <clears throat> Anyways. Ah, uh, there we go. Make sure you forget to put heavy gloves back on for safety. Er, I think I said that backwards. Say, uh... Installation of the new blades is pretty simple. You just need a torque wrench and a rag. This will help cushion the blades from the wood. For my particular model, it specifies between 70 to 90 foot-pounds. I'm going to set this right in the middle there. Be sure to check your owner's manual for your torque specifications. I want to do some final checking with the clearances. Although we're sure we've got the right part number and matching blades, let's do a sanity check to ensure they won't hit the deck sides, or each other for that matter. As you can see, there is plenty of clearance here. Flipping the deck back over, let's check the tightness of these idler pulleys. I've seen some videos where these weren't torqued down properly from the factory or have come loose over time, so we're just going to snug these down a bit to ensure that everything is tight. If you do this, make sure that the pulley is still spread freely after tightening. Hey, and that's it. Let's reinstall the deck in reverse order. It can be a jungle out there, so why not protect your investment by installing a brush guard? You never know when a random, deep-forested, hairy woodland creature will jump right out in front of you. Isn't that right, Mr. Lithgow? These yellow brush guards are typically found on the X-T2 models, but they fit perfectly fine on the X-T1s. The installation is pretty simple, it connects with a couple of bolts on each side. The finish seems pretty nice, and well, I guess there's not much to this thing besides the tube and a couple brackets, so this is obviously money well spent. Let's get this thing installed. Uh, be a pal and hand my 5 8 inch socket from that ratchet set. <laughs> Great Scott! You're right! <laughs> no, 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 it's not a weather experiment. It's a brush guard! <clears throat> We'll add these small finishing touches, and we'll just ever so carefully tap these end caps into place, and done. One of the best ways to safeguard buying a new battery every year is to ensure it's maintaining a charge when not in use. I've used these battery tenders for years on my small inches, and they really do help. This unit has easy to read color lights to indicate the battery state. Simply hook up the positive and negative battery clamps. But let's install this quick connect to the battery so we can plug it in easier. We'll simply bolt these leads down under their new homes. Then to ensure the wiring stays neatly tucked away, we'll install some zip ties. Now all we have to do when we store the mower is release this cap and plug it into our tender. Then when we're ready to mow, we can just disconnect and tuck this lead back into the battery compartment. And it's as easy as that. Having trouble mowing your lawn, but your tires just won't grip? Prickly cactus is making your tires flat? Well then what you need is an ATV tire upgrade. Call now. Yes, it's true. I'm going to install a set of these aggressive tires on my mower as well. Sure, it'll help it grip better and make it more resistant to tire punctures, but I mean, look at these. And this, my friends, is the essence of dibs. It may not be what others consider right, but that's definitely doing it Bigfoot style. For the rear, I bought a 20x10x8, by by which, although a bit wider than the stock tire, should fit the rim nicely. For the front, I found these Carlisle X-Tracks. These are 15x5x6s, which means they'll be a little bit more narrow. However, they should also fit on the stock rims without an issue. This tread is quite aggressive and should give the extra grip needed when maneuvering around on the steeper terrain. Let's get these wheels off so we can begin our tire swap. We'll simply jack the front up first, and lay the axles on a couple jack stands. Remove the plastic hub cover to expose the cotter pin. We'll wipe off a little bit of this excess grease so we can see what we're doing. 
Sometimes these come off easier than other times. I'm putting the pliers through the eyelid of the cotter pin. It's come part way off, but it kind of needs just a little bit more persuasion. These cotter pins will be replaced, so don't even worry about preserving them. For the rear, we'll simply put the tractor on jack stands underneath each axle. Remove the plastic hub cover to expose the bolt. I'm going to use this chalk to help prevent the wheel from spinning while I break the tension free. Now, see, had I thought about this more, I would have just engaged the brake, but in true spirit of dibs. But we can do better, and I have an idea how we can take this to the next level. And my friends down at Industrial Coating Solutions can definitely make this happen. Just look at these things. These are absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to get these tires on and have a better look. For the wheels, let's change out the grease fittings since they were coated too in the process. We'll score the coating with a razor blade right where it will need to separate from the base. And we'll remove the fitting. Hmm, what on earth is going on here? Well, it seems these are not threaded, so they must have been pressed in. However, I picked up a set of these threaded fittings, so let's see if we can get them to self-start into the existing holes. It should be easy. Ah. Well, that certainly escalated quickly, so I took the wheels in a TKI CNC. They figured out how to get a new set of these fittings pressed into the wheel and save the project from the brink of disaster. For the front wheels, we'll also need to install a new set of bushings. I ordered these straight off the Cub Cadet website. Of course, we'll need four of these, two for each front wheel. And we'll just ever so carefully persuade these back into the front wheels. Now we're ready to install the front wheels back onto the mower. Let's clean up our grease and put a little clean grease back on. Slide on the wheel. We'll follow this by installing our washer. And our new cotter pin. And finally we'll fill these all the way up with grease. Reinstall the plastic hub cover and we're about done. This is already looking quite awesome. For the rear wheels, let's clean the shaft off and remove everything. I don't think it's really necessary to lubricate this since the wheel will be locked into place, but it'll prevent it from getting stuck when we have to take it off again in the future. We'll add a little thread locker to the bolt and go ahead and crank this back on. And that's it, we're done. Then I had an idea. What if we were to take this to the next level again? Perhaps maybe. Ah, should I? Should I tint my headlights? Yes, we shall in the spirit of dibs. Ghost Dad. Did someone say tinting the headlights on a lawnmower? First, let's clean those lenses with some alcohol. We'll need a few things, including a squeegee. Well, uh, this may work. Let's peep game on this automotive window tint. All right, let's peel this baby back and spray it down with our secret juice. Then, we'll gently lay it onto the lens and start to work out the water. Sometimes, it helps to apply a little heat to stretch out the control. Hmm, now let's see if we can work those bubbles out. Hmm, all right, let's try this again. All right, let's work it out. Working it out, doing my thing. Let's get the heat on it. Working it out. Um, now what if we... What if you... No. No, uh, wait, stretch it. No, that's not working. Uh, no. That ain't working. Uh, How about... Yeah. Uh, that ain't working. No. Dude, check this out. Wow, that is absolutely fantastic. Why didn't you do this earlier? When in doubt, do it the easy way. This coating, I mean, it's so even, it's almost like you sprayed it on. I used my own special blend of Windex, quarter tint, matte finish Krylon, and just a dab of JB Weld. Like a glove, dude! These are amazing, and I can't wait to get them on. Let's get these back into the shop and install them.
dreamed of doing since I was a kid. Creating a yard-munching masterpiece that would be the envy of the block. Well, at least that's what I think, anyways. Let's test this out to see how it performs. This is a dense part of the yard from where the wonders of the leech field flourish. And I can definitely say that this thick overgrowth will be quite a mouthful. I do notice that the blade noise is considerably louder. It reminds me of an aircraft at some 30,000 feet as it tears through the fluffy grass. It does miss some of the grass down the center if we take a full swipe. But this is an extreme amount of vegetation, and I normally wouldn't be taking this wide of a bite. The traction from these tires has noticeably improved. Some of these troublesome spots are a bit easier to tackle, and I have more confidence that I can get into some of these areas and back out safely. Additionally, my concern for some of these prickly things has gone way down. Let's test the brush guard. Yes, brilliant. Test passed. And we're definitely not going to need these anymore. And now, how do we end this? I have an idea. I think it's safe to conclude that life is not just about work and chores. It's about what you make of it. It can be as colorful and as fun as you want. You just have to approach it with the right frame of mind. We are mixing the chain. this first installment in our new Dib series, please consider subscribing and joining our community. Adventure waits just around the corner, and we'd love to have you along for the ride.